Okay, what's your name, my friend? Zaman. Zaman. Now, do you believe in evolution? Yes. Now, explain to me what what what, what do you, when you say evolution, what do you mean by that? Evolution, I believe that we were came from basically like a primordial ooze, and then randomly, by chance, we developed into people, just over millions and millions of years of natural selection. So, so given the theory of natural selection, I mean, do you think that man has any inherent meaning or worth? I believe that we will de- we develop our own worth. Like, I don't believe that anyone gave us our worth. Like, I believe in God, but I believe God just kind of made us. And then decided to be like, all right, I wonder how these guys will turn out. So basically, you believe in maybe like the deistic version of God, that God is there, but he's not really involved. Yes, exactly. Now, how do you, now could you be wrong about that? Yes. Now, if you could be wrong about that, could you be wrong about everything else that you know? Possibly. Now, I want you to think about this carefully, okay? okay. If you could be wrong about not only your position on deism and evolution, but as you just stated, you could be wrong about everything that you claim to know, doesn't it follow that you don't know anything for certain? Well, none of us know anything really for certain. The Bible doesn't really, uh, I, I don't mean to like wreck on Christianity, but the Bible is just a book. The Quran's just a book and the Torah is just a piece of paper. So none of us really know anything for sure, do we? But given the fact that you've already said that you, you could be wrong and you don't know anything for certain, so what you just said about the Bible and the Quran, is that true or not true? Uh... Anything could really be true and anything could really not be true. We don't really have any proof other than uh, some old bones and uh, some uh, books. So, I mean, but the statement that we could be wrong or we could, you know, be wrong about what we claim to know, isn't that an absolute statement? That we could be wrong? Yes, I guess. So then you don't live in a world where you don't know. You actually do know certain things like that we could be wrong. Yes, I do know that we could not know. How do you know that for certain? Oh man, this is getting all philosophical, isn't it? How do I know that we don't know for certain? Well, because no one's really given me any like definite proof yet. Like no one's like plainly God is real reasons, and no one's been like evol- the theory of evolution is real because reasons. Like people have been trying to get people have been trying to get people to believe that it's like concrete fact, but it's really not. So we all are just left to believe what we believe is the most realistic solution. Yeah, you know, as a Christian, what I believe is that, you know, God created the world, and he created it and made it, made it good, made it perfect, okay? He sent his son Jesus to die on a cross to save us from our sin. If, and, if, and, and the way that he did that is if you'd repent and believe in him, he, you would be forgiven. He would take your sin and put it on Christ and what he did on the cross, and he would take the perfect righteousness of Christ and he would give that to you, credit that to your account, okay? But when Jesus died on the cross for sinners, he also did that to redeem our mind and to redeem our worldview and our thinking so that we can know things for certain. So what I'm saying is this, that either you're going to choose your own worldview and be reduced to a world of uncertainty and ultimately, I would say, contradiction or you're going to know certainty through God. Ah, so that's... All right, but I mean, I'm going to take a different spin on that. I'm going to say that uh, the reason that we have science and that we have all of these things, like we have chemistry and physics and all that, is because I personally believe that God wanted us to discover the world for ourselves. And if I believe that, then I don't believe God would handle would hand anything to us on a silver platter like that. Like... There's all your sins, that's all your stuff, here's enlightenment and all that. I believe that Jesus took our sins upon himself. Well, because personally, uh, my dad's Islamic, so I got, yeah. I believe that Jesus was a prophet, but not uh, the son of God. That's, sorry. But, um, so I believe that his sins, he did take our sins, but I believe what he gave to us was the right to believe what we're, we want to believe. But you see, the problem with that is that once you've surrendered knowledge by saying that you could be wrong about everything you claim to know, okay, even the statements you're making right now about religion, God, Jesus being or not being the Son of God are unknowable. Doesn't that disturb you? Well, nothing's really knowable. Like, you know that for certain, that nothing is really knowable? Well, the way... Are you going about this like the Bible, like, cemently says everything that we need to know about the world and God? 
Well, I'm a Christian, so yeah, obviously I, I go by the biblical worldview and what the Bible teaches. All right, well, yeah, I mean, that's, you're kind of like coming at this at from an angle where the Bible's correct and everything else, like, like the Bible is cemented and science is kind of like off in the world. Of- oh, no, we believe in science. I mean, I believe in science. I believe in, uh, I believe that things can adapt and change. And I believe in maybe what's known as microevolution. I think you can have a little dog and a big dog, but at the end of the day, you got a dog. I don't think a dog is ever going to turn into a cat or into an owl or into anything other than a dog. You see what I'm saying? Well, yeah, well, that's because that's not how really evolution works. Things develop out from themselves because... I understand that, but what I'm saying is that I don't think there's ever going to be a case where you could prove a transitionary uh, a fossil or you're going to be able to prove that something evolved from one kind of thing to another kind of thing. Despite the very similar uh, aspects of the DNA and how the chromosomes, we could logically see them mutating? I don't think you can see it logically, but see, that's a log- when you say logic, what I take that to mean is you believe, you believe in the leap of evolution that says because humans have certain genetic similarities to other things in this world then we must have or maybe came from them i don't believe that at all any more than you know i think that because that we share certain similarities to an octopus we came from an octopus ah. well i don't know that makes me feel more comfortable though like the idea that we all evolved from something as opposed to we were all just made like the problem with saying that is that you know if you believe that you evolved from something we're, we're back to square one, especially in your worldview, where you don't know if you know anything for certain, okay? Number one, your theory of how we evolved is uncertain. And number two, your theory of what man is and whether he has meaning and significance, that is also uncertain. See, what I'm trying to show you is that without the Bible and without the biblical worldview, your worldview is reduced to a point of absurdity because you go around life as if you know things when according to your worldview, you don't know things for certain. You see the problem with that? And that's why science textbooks are changed every year. Yeah, that's right. And so as a Christian, we believe that God's word doesn't change, that his, his testimony is unfailing, that he is trustworthy, that he is that transcendent reality that makes everything make sense. And without God, you couldn't know anything for certain. I think you've proven that to me today by saying that you could be wrong about everything that you claim to know. Does that make sense? See, that's why, according to the Bible, when God sent a son, he sent a son in this world, not just so that we can live differently and be better people, okay, but he sent his son into the world to redeem us because our reason is fallen and our thought process is fallen. Our minds are fallen because of sin. So the big dilemma that you and I have is a sin. And sin has made it impossible for you and I to think rightly about your life or my life and about the world around us. That's what Jesus did when he came died on the cross for sinners, he redeems our worldview, he redeems our thinking, so that when we think the thoughts after him, then all of a sudden we know what life is about, we know what humanity is, we know that you do have dignity, you do have worth, because you're created in the image of God, and you're not the byproduct of random chance, or, or, even, or even a process that was guided by a being that is ultimately unknowable. We believe he is, he is knowable, and that without him, you really can't know anything for certain. Why do they have to be mutually exclusive? Because truth is exclusive. So, for example, you can't say that you're here and that you're not here in the same way at the same time. That's called the law of non-contradiction. Truth, truth by its very nature, is an exclusive thing. But you can say that God made science possible. I told you already, I believe in science. We don't have a problem with science. What we have, what we have a problem with is we have a problem with macroevolution. The idea that we evolved over billions of years from one type of species to another. We don't believe that because it contradicts the Bible. And so ultimately, it comes down to a a nature of worldview. Mine is a biblical worldview. My My thoughts are guided by the Bible. And your worldview, I would say, is suspect and and it's ultimately subject to futility because you don't know anything for certain. Yeah, still the problem that I'm having is that you don't know anything for certain, yet you imagine that the Bible says everything for certain. Well, I, actually, I would say that I do know things for certain because I think the thoughts of God after him as he's revealed in Scripture. So that would say that's the only way to know things for certain is if you follow the thinking of an omniscient God. See, for God, all the facts are in. For God, he doesn't learn. He doesn't change. He, he doesn't absorb knowledge passively. He knows everything. That's the meaning of being. That's the meaning of God. 
that he knows everything is omnipotent, omnipresent, and he's all and he's all knowing. And so for God, he knows everything. And that's why we can know things is because we ha we derive our knowledge from the being that knows everything. But isn't this kind of a third person kind of view on God? Because How, what, what do you mean by that? Well, I mean, someone had to write the Bible and we infer that that person directly knew from God, that God directly told him how to write the Bible. And that guy didn't like take anything upon himself to like add little things into the Bible as to what he wanted. And then someone else wrote the Bible again because it had to be distributed out throughout everybody because they didn't have like printing presses and everything. So multiple people made multiple Bibles and then that was spread out. And so how do we know for sure what the actual word of God was when it could have been because humans we tend to exaggerate and like input our own things when we relate anything could have happened. Exactly. So but isn't it nice to be able to reason and to be able to make predications like that and to be able to make solid conclusions to investigate things with certainty? But what I'm saying to you is that your worldview does not give you the ability to do that. My worldview does. Because you've surrendered knowledge already. The very critique that you're bringing against the biblical worldview doesn't make sense in your worldview, only in mine. So you could want no greater proof of Christianity than that if you deny it, you assert it. Well, we can also, what was it? I think it was Ralph Waldo Emerson that said, do I contradict myself? Fine, I contradict myself. contradict myself. I am large and I contain multitudes. What does that mean? That means that despite the fact that I may contradict myself, I still make solid points. How would you know for certain? Because the way that you're saying that I'm doing this is that because I do not live in a world with certainty, I cannot make certain statements. Yeah, it's kind of logical, don't you think? Well, I mean, how come because I don't say everything certain, uh, because I don't say everything with certainty, that I can't say some things with certainty? Because if you... If you bring into question everything that you claim to know, then it follows you know nothing for certain. So it's actually your own world, by your own admission, if you cast doubt on everything that you know, if you cast doubt on the possibility of knowing things for certain, then you have surrendered philosophical certainty. When you do that, that means everything you espouse is subject and ultimately unknowable. But you don't live like that, and that's the Christian's perspective, is you actually don't live consistent with your worldview. You actually live like a Christian. You live knowing that there's truth and there's error, there's light and there's darkness, there's e there's good and there's evil. If you if you buy, for example, if you buy a car, and you're checking out at the finance office, if they get those numbers wrong, and the and the, and the finance guy tur turns to you and says, "It's okay, I'm an agnostic," would that be okay? That is bringing religious views into a situation where religion has no effect. Well, who told you that religion doesn't have any effect in those in those spheres? Because we're making a deal with them. I feel like you totally went on topic with that because that's like that's what like me. I'm just trying to point out the consistency of your worldview, and what I'm saying is that you don't live your worldview consistently. When you go to the counter, just to make it real easy, right? A little boy, a little boy goes. Let's say your son. Okay, let's say you had a child. They go to the counter. He gives you, he gives, you know, you give him a dollar to go buy a piece of candy. If the cashier doesn't give him exact change, you would probably come back to the counter, wouldn't you? Yeah, because I'd be like, the kid didn't get his candy. That's right. So you live in a world of certainty. You live like that. But then in your philosophy, you try to deny that you live in that kind of world. You see the contradiction? No. Why not? Because you're bringing religion into everyday aspects. That's like, that's like me being up a guy and being like, Oh yeah, I did that because I'm agnostic because I have no certainty in my life, so I wanted to beat you up. But that's like not; it doesn't really apply because a uh, religion is not a part of religion. I believe is part of your life, but it isn't. At least for me, it's not my life, so I can't bring it into every aspect of what I do. I think you do. I just think you do it unconsciously, or I don't think you do it intentionally. But the Bible says that everybody knows the knowledge of God, and everybody knows God exists. But what happens is that we suppress the truth in un unrighteousness because we want to live our own lives and we want to live according to the moral dictates of our own heart. We don't want to acknowledge God in everything that we do. But the problem is, is that the Bible says you're actually in contact with God when you suppress the truth about God, which means that basically you, you are a religious person, but you're just not believing in, in the God of the Bible. You've made a God in your own image to suit your own likeness, you've made a religion or a worldview in your own image, 
and according to the philosophy of your own liking in order to live the way you want to live. But that's not a path to truth. See, if everybody goes around making up their own religion, then they're, again, then you're back to the position that we started with, absurdity. Because, because there's no way to arbitrate between two worldviews. If he wants to believe in the, in the pedophilia God that allows for pedophiles to have their way, and he wants to believe in the homosexual God that allows for homosexuality, homosexuals to have their way, you see what I'm saying? If everyone gets to do what's right in their own eyes, that's not a way to know truth. And ultimately, that's a path to self-contradiction, and it's a path to absurdity. And we have laws. I would say the only reason we have laws is because of the God of the Bible who gave us these laws, right? For example, I mean, you believe in the laws of logic. Yes. Where do the laws of logic come from? The need to make a society that didn't collapse in on itself. So are they just... Are they just conventional laws? We just are they just pragmatic laws, or do they actually do they actually exist? They don't actually exist, but because we need them so that our so that people aren't, as you said, raping children, and uh, well, I don't agree with the homosexual thing, but uh, they're not raping children, and murdering people. So we needed them so that life wouldn't be completely like anarchy. I don't know. But... Yeah, so that I understand that the things won't won't just you know dissolve in an anarchy but but i mean the very statement you just made used the laws of logic in order to make them you see it was an old philosopher who said that the way that you know the laws of logic are true is if you try to deny them so if you try to deny that the laws of logic exist you have to use the laws of logic to deny their existence therefore you could want no greater proof that the laws of logic exist but that if you deny them you assert them and that's what I'm saying about the existence of God. That's how you know the Christian worldview is true. By trying to deny the Christian worldview, you actually end up presupposing it or assuming the Christian worldview in the process. You could want no better proof than that. I Can you like relay that to you? Yeah, basically all I'm saying is that without the Christian worldview, you can't reason correctly. And the reason you know that's right is by trying to deny it. So if you deny the God of Scripture... None of the non-Christian worldviews can account for reality and why we live in a universe of morals, meaning, beauty, logic, why we live in a universe of reason. And, and, and because of that, you assume, you must assume the Christian worldview in order even to make a critique on the Christian worldview. So by doing that, you exclude all other religions. Right? Yes. Of course. Because we've already established the truth is exclusive, right? For example, you can't say – so, for example, when, 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 you, when you turn in a, a test or a paper right here at school, can the teacher give you an A and an F at the same time? No. Why not? Because that would be uh, – it's the same test, but there's only one way to look at it. But when you look at the Bible and the Quran and the Torah – they're all basically the same thing. Well, absolutely not. And let me just give you an example of that, okay? If you're a Muslim, like you say your father is Islamic, okay? Then you know that, like, in Islam, one of, the, one of the worst things that you can believe in is shirk, which is attributing partners to Allah, to saying that God has other, other partners with him, okay? That's a grave sin in Islam. It's, it's absolutely blasphemous, okay? But as a Christian, fundamental to Christianity is the belief in the Trinity, so Islam and Christianity could not be further apart at the very at the most fundamental level. We believe that God is triune, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Islam believes that if you believe that, you've committed one of the greatest sins of Islam. We don't believe that, uh, we don't believe that uh, Jesus was the Son of God. He was just a prophet. That's right. And so you've just proven the exclusivity of truth again. We can't both believe. So can you believe that Jesus is the Son of God and that he's not the Son of God at the same time? No, but you can still believe the basic principles of both books because both of them try to do the same thing. They both try to get people to look at the world and try to be good to people. Like, because in Christianity, you try to be, uh, it's seen good to uh, give those less fortunate, and that's one of the pillars of Islam. Well, any, anybody can tell you that what they're teaching is how to do good to people. But we're, we're not after just a, a moral maxim. We're, act, we're actually trying to figure out who is telling us the truth about reality. You see, because the devil could lie to you the level, and tell you some truths in the process. 
And so what we want to do is determine which worldview can actually account for reality and which worldview actually conforms to reality because what is true is what is real. You know, why can't an Islamic guy come up to me and make the exact same arguments that you're making to me right now? Well, see, as a Christian, I have a reason for that. It's because he's depending on the Bible just like everybody else. Quran. Well, the Quran depends on the Bible. That's why in the Quran, it assumes that you know the Bible. For example, can I give you an example? For example, if you read the Quran, you're going to study. You're going you're to study the Quran. You're going to read about the life of David. You're going to read about Moses, Abraham. You're, you, you're going to read about these people. But the problem is, is that Quran never tells you who these people are. It just assumes that you know who they are. It doesn't give you the genealogies of Solomon. It just assumes that you know Solomon. But where does that assumption come from? It comes from the Bible. Well, it's kind of like the same way of looking at like a fairy tale character. Like we don't go deep in depth about who the heck uh, Little Red Riding Hood is. We just kind of be like, this is Little Red Riding Hood. This is what she did. See, that's not what Islam teaches. So Islam, on its own, on its own basis, doesn't teach that it's possible to believe that the, the, the characters in the Quran are mythical characters and that it's not important whether they existed or not. No, the Quran actually purports to be real history. And so what I'm saying is that without the Bible, you don't know who Abraham was. You don't know who Solomon was. So the Quran assumes that you that you have a biblical background, which is just another way of saying the Quran presupposes the Bible. I mean, uh, well, the Bible did come before the Quran. And it was a, the Quran is an interesting, uh, you know, subject to study. But so, but still, the Quran, uh, you need, what is it? You need the stories. Give me one second here, guys. Yeah, you know, we're talking about some very important things. These are these are questions of ultimate reality. So we're getting down to the basics of your worldview and what what really what really governs your philosophy of life and how you think about things. Because it's the most important thing in the, in, the, in the world. It's how you're going to build your life. You're going to build your life on your worldview. And if you, you look at life as relativist in a relativistic way, well, then you are going to have to live with the consequences of relativism or postmodernism. So if postmodernism is true, then, my friend, anybody can determine their own reality. And if anybody determines their own reality, well, then it's up to the pedophile, it's up to the murderer or the rapist to say, hey, murder and rape and pedophilia is okay in my reality. And we have no moral judgment uh, on something like We can't make any moral judgment on something as awful as pedophilia because you've already stated that morality is relative. See the problem with that? Well, that is why we have law where we get a group of people that all kind of uh, believe we get a group of people who, like in uh, ancient Greece and all that, where they all came together and they were like, okay, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong. And then they set it in stone. And that was the law. And they didn't have a right. But could you be wrong about your theory of those people coming together and the history of that? Well, by saying that I could be wrong about that, you could be wrong about the Bible. Well, hold on a second. Because before you can tell other people what they might be wrong about, once you surrender knowledge, you don't know that I could be wrong about anything. See the problem with that? If I certainly say something, then if I live with certainty about, if I believe that everything I believe is right, then that would leave no room for interpretation for others, and that would negate their proof. Well, we can interpret certain things to a degree, but not ultimately. I mean, ultimately, there are certain things that are simply true in themselves, and if you try to deny them, just like the laws of logic, you end up asserting them. So there are certain Certain things that are undeniable, they're invariant, they don't change, like the laws of morality, the laws of ethics, the laws of reason, the laws of logic. Those things don't ever change. That's why it's never okay to go around contradicting yourself. Your teacher can't give you an A and an F at the same time. It's a logical impossibility. And you don't live in a world like that. You prove it every day, every time you expect a correct change, every time you expect a law to stand up on your behalf, every time you go into a courtroom and demand justice. You're living in a world of absolutes. What the Bible would say to you is just that the Bible wants you to come into the truth and know the truth and know where truth is from. It's only from God, the God of Scripture. And the reason, that, and the way that you can know that, according to Jesus, is to know him as Lord and Savior. Jesus said you will know the truth and the truth will set you free because he died not just to make you a better person. He died to redeem you, redeem your thinking, redeem your mind, and to redeem your worldview. Does that make sense? 
know it's difficult. I know it's hard. I know it sounds narrow-minded. But think of the alternative. The alternative to me would be a world of chaos where everyone determines what's right in their own eyes. And therefore, we would, we would dissolve into anarchy, just like you said. We dissolve into a world of anarchy where people can determine for themselves what is moral and what is not. And so we go from a postmodern world that says, well, we accept gay marriage. But when, when postmodernism remains consistent, then it also has to accept incestuous marriage. It also has to accept pedophilia marriage, bestiality, which the world is already doing. I mean, just recently in the UK, a woman married her dog. I mean, this is the world we're living in. We're reaping what we've sown in a postmodern world. This is why it's so important for you to know the truth. But you're not going to know the truth according to your worldview. You will only know the truth according to the worldview that's revealed in Scripture, in the Bible, through Jesus Christ. You've already surrendered knowledge at the very beginning, saying you could be wrong about everything, including that. Yes. But what if I do? You can say it, but it really has no meaning, at least not in your worldview. But that's the problem, my friend, is that we believe, and I think you know in the depth of your heart, you know that your words have meaning. You know that, you know that, that's okay. You know that, uh, you know that there's consequences to ideas. There's consequences to how you live. You can be a postmodern person all you want. But if you go and break the law, you're going to pay the fine, and you're going to end up in prison whether you're postmodern or not. You see what I'm saying? See, the Bible says that when we deny God, when we deny our maker, when we deny our creator, we live in self-contradiction. We go around deceiving ourselves about what we truly believe, and that's a consequence of sin. That's why we need repentance and faith. To repent comes from the Greek word metanoia. It means to change your mind, which means you have to have a worldview shift. And that's a supernatural thing that happens. It's a spiritual thing that happens. God's Holy Spirit convicts your heart, comes into your life. By faith, you accept Jesus Christ, what he did on the cross. He redeems you, forgives you of your sin, gives you a new heart, a new mind, gives you a new way to live. You live according to his word, not according to the dictates of your heart. And that's, that's how you'll know things for certain. You'll, you'll know who you are, you'll know who God is, and you'll know the world around you. Does that make sense? This was a great conversation. I appreciate your time.